Hello. Anybody here? Hi, Rabbi. How are you doing? Baruch Hashem. How's Rabbi? How you doing, Hashem Kitoy? Baruch Hashem. What have you been up to? What have I been up to? Um, I've been um, learning. <coughs> You're giving shiurim yourself now? I am giving shiurim, yeah. Um, Do you need to... material? Huh? You need material. I do. Here I am. <laughs> That's right. You got to learn from the best. That's... <laughs> but, um... John, how are you? <clears throat> Hi, Yaakov. Hi, Rabbi. How are you? Don't touch that. Never soon. How's Rabbi doing? Thank God. As long as I don't have to put on my mask. <laughs> so don't this mask thing. How have you been, Yaakov? Amazing. Doing amazing. Oh, anybody, anybody booking any flights yet or not yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know about to Israel, but uh, I got I got a few flights booked last week. Oh yeah, okay, that's for sure. Lot, lot. Uman and Mexico. Uman? Yeah. Really? People are going now? No, they booked it for Rosh Hashanah. Oh, nice. Okay. Same guy going to Uman and Mexico? No, 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 no. <laughs> I was wondering what's gonna. <clears throat> I was wondering what's Where gonna is he be. Going first? I, know. I know. I was wondering what's gonna be with Rosh Hashanah. I can't imagine the Israeli government is gonna let people go to Uman and then come back without being quarantined for four for two weeks. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. Alagan. Yeah. Whole things about again. Jerry, can I start or what? Maybe you could start. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. What's it called? I'm gonna spread that it's live right now. Um, everything's set up. So whenever Rebbe's ready, I'm gonna mute myself and and start spreading the word. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna discuss this night. Uh, this evening we're gonna discuss uh, the concept, the two psukim in this week's parsha that we had now. Very very interesting psukim. Uh, definitely one of a kind. And those are the Psukim and Pashas Ba'aleischa of Vayihi bin Soya Ha'oren Vayoyme Moshe. Kuma Hashem v'yafutsu ha'ivecho v'yonusu m'sanecha m'iponecho v'nucha yoyim ha'ashuvu ha'ashem riva v'yisal fi'isur. So this is a very, very special two Psukim. It has in it actually Pehe Oisius, 85 Oisius. And what there are various things that sets it aside from all of other parashis in the Torah. The first of all is that if you look in your Chumash, you'll see that there's what's called Nunin HaFuchin. You have backwards Nunin, one before Vayin Ben Soya, and you have one after Vayin Ben Soya. Two backwards Nunin. 
So there's a lot to discuss about these uh, backward moon. And number one, we'll begin with a halachic issue. There's a halachic issue if it's acceptable to put backward moon in the Torah. So where it says in the Gemara to make simonim, I say simnios, but it doesn't say that they should be backward nunim. This, that it says to make backward nunim, this is a Zoya Kodesh. And uh, the Marshal comes along. The Marshal was the big Pesik in the time of the Ramoy. He was a relative of the Ramoy. He was very, very big. And at that time, it seems, you know, the, you realize, of course, that the Zoya came out Originally, the first time, you know, we found the Zaya first only after many, many years that it was lost in the 1200s. So the Zaya was still a new thing. So, you know, when people came and they wanted to do everything like it says in the Zaya, it's a big place, like the Marshal was, were a little upset about it, they were hesitant about it. And they said, none of this new stuff, you know what I mean? What it says in the Gemara is good. What the Zoya, we don't pass like what it says in the Zoya. And he said that, you know, we, we, we know that the Torah has to have the exact amount of letters, right? You can't have a letter more, you can't have a letter less. If you have an extra letter in the Torah, the Torah is possible. If you have a letter missing, the Torah is possible. So a backward nun is a nun none the same. Nonetheless, it's a nun. So if you have an extra extra munim in the Torah, we can't allow that. So the Marshal says, it's very nice that there's a Zaya. It's not an excuse to be able to, it's not an excuse to be able to put munim, extra munim in the Torah. So you can't put in the backward munim. So that, that, that made a lot of people very uncomfortable. Comes along the Magda uh, Behuda. And then Neidu Behuda said a Gavaldig idea. And he wanted to be Matar. And, and this is, we Paskin like the Neidu Behuda. We do like the Neidu Behuda says. And we do have in our Sefer Torah backward Munin before Vahib and Soya and after Vahib and Soya, backward Muns. So he says, the Torah says that you're not, you're not allowed to have an extra letter in the Torah. But let's say a blotch ink will spill on the, on the Sefer Torah. A little ink, it'll make some kind of mark. Is that going to be, is that going to be possible to say for Torah? If you'll make, let's say, stars or asterisks in the Sefer Torah, is that possible to say for Torah? An asterisk doesn't possible to say for Torah. A star doesn't possible to say for Torah. An ice possible to say for Torah. A backwards moon is not an ice. So since a backwards moon and not an ice, not to be certain, not to be the said, it's okay, you could put the backward moon in the Torah before and after the parish of Ahib and Sayyahor. So that's as far as the halachic issue of writing it. Nonetheless, we have to understand what is this all about? Why did the Torah make backwards known? And why is it so important? What, what, what is the Torah coming to teach us over here? So as far as this is concerned, we have a machlekes in the Gemara and Shabbos. We have a machlekes tanon. I mean, doesn't the Gemara mention the backwards known? No. It doesn't mention Simonim at all. Rashi says Simonim. I said Simonim. Simonim, it says. The Gemara says like this. The Gemara says, I say lecha also le'akudosh baruch hu Simoniyos. Simonim, yes. But backwards, Nunim, I mentioned, is only from the Zoya Kodesh. So that disturbed very much the Marashal. Until the Medebi Yudu came along and he found it. And that's how we uh, accustom ourselves. So we have two opinions in the Gemara as to what the Ibn Sayyah is all about. One, part, one, one shita is that the reason that there are Simonim is coming to teach me that the Ibn Sayyah only doesn't belong over here in the Torah. It doesn't belong in the place that it was put. It needs to be somewhere else, Bechlau. Where is that somewhere else? So it says it needs to be in the Dgolim. Rashi says, where are the Dgolim? What are the Dgolim? In Pashas Bamidba, back when, way back when, when it tells us about the uh, various, the counting of the Jewish people, so they counted the Degel Machne Yehuda and the Degel Machne 
Reuve. And then after that, you have the Nasa Oyo Moyed, the Pasuk says. The Nasa Oyo Moyed. One second. In Perik Bay's Pasuk Yudzayan, it says over there, the Nasa Oyo Moyed Machane Aladi and Besoycha Machanois. Kashe Yachan will can you show? So since the post says over there, over there it would be appropriate to say, So the Balaturim says something fascinating over here. That if you count back, you know that whenever we have in the Torah a pay, or you have a Samach. So that's a simon of a parasha, right? That's the end of a parasha. We know that the reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made parashas was to give time in parasha the parasha for Moshe Rabbeinu to be misbrained. So if you go back over here, 50 parashas, like a nun, but backwards, a backwards nun. You go back 50 parashas, 50 pays, 50 samachs. So you're going to come to the parasha of Renosa Oyel Moed. So that's exactly, so in other words, the backwards nuns are telling me where to go. I myself counted this once when I was younger, and uh, to me it comes out 48, 49, but uh, that, in, that is what the Balaturim says. I had a little bit of a difficulty with this um, Pirish of Rashi, that Rashi says that it should go over there, because the Pasuk over there says, Renosa oil moyed, that oil moyed would move. And then we say Vahibin Soya. But over here we have in the Pasha Vahibin Soya, it also says when the when the Oren rested, they would say Shuva That doesn't seem to fit in over there. So in Pasha Baloischa, just a little bit before the Psukum of Vahibin Soya in Hamishi, in Tayyak Yud, over there it talks about the first time that the Jewish people actually did move. So the first time that the Jewish people did move was on the 20th day of Iyar. And it says over there that Yisu Barishayna and Degel Machne Yehuda went, and then Degel Machne Reuven went. And then there's a possible like this. The Nasu HaKohosim, Noise HaMikdosh. The Kohosim, who were the ones that carried everything on the Mikdosh, they moved along. The Hekimo HaMishkon Adboyim. And they erected the Mishkon by the time uh, everybody had arrived. So over here on this pasuk, the Chizkuni says, here is where Vayihib and Soya Ha'orin has to be. So I understand that the reason Vayihib and Soya Ha'orin has to be over here is because here the pasuk already says, Venosu HaKohosim, so there it belongs Vayihib and Soya. And then Vayikimu as HaMishkon Ad Boyom, Vayikimu as HaMishkon means they actually erected the Mishkon Ad Boyom. So it's talking about also when they rested. So here the Pasuk applies of the Yoyman. So I understand that's why the Chizkuni doesn't want to learn like Rashi, because by Rashi, the second Pasuk, according to Rashi, why is the Nucha Yoyman doing over there by Venos Oyel Moyet? But according to the Chizkuni, it's very good why over here by Venosu Akosim, the Kimu Asamishko Agboyo. So that's another opinion. So one, one opinion is that this these backwards nun are teaching us that this parasha doesn't have to be here. Why was it put precisely? Why was it put precisely where it was? Over here by Hebrew Sayyid. So the Gemara says that it comes to be Magdu Ben Paronius the Paronius. Bad things were happening over here in this parasha. It says just before the Yisu Mehar Hashem that the Jewish people left Har Hashem. And uh, it says in Chazal that the Jewish people, they left Har Sinai in not a nice way. They left Har Sinai. And then after that, we have all the terrible things about Taveiro and the Misoinanim that the Jewish people complained about Slav. So we didn't want to have all these bad things one after another. So in between, so in between came along the Torah and the Torah put in the parish of Ayyibin Seya to make a hefsik that it shouldn't be all in unison, one after the next. That is one opinion of the Gemara, that this parasha doesn't belong, it belongs somewhere else. Another opinion in the Gemara, the opinion of Rebbe, is that this comes to teach me 
that Vayhib and Soya HaOrin is a special Sefer B'Snei Atzmo. In other words, this is we're used to that there are Chamisha Chumashim in the Torah, there are five Chumashim, they really aren't five Chumashim. There are seven Sforim in the Torah. Gracious, Shmois, Vayikro, Bamidbar Til Vayhib and Soya, Vayhib and Soya, Bamidbar after Vayhib and Soya, and Dvorim. So there are really seven Svarim in the Chumash, seven Svarim, Keneged, the seven days of the week, Keneged, the seven Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Chesed, Vura, Teferas, etc. Now, if so, that comes out that it's a whole Sefer, like Hebrew Sefer is an entire Sefer. So the Gemara says that if you're able, when, if there's a fire, Chas Shalom and Shabbos, and normally you're not allowed to go save things in a fire. If there's, not, if there's no issue with Pikuach Nefesh, you're not allowed to save stuff, money, etc. But if you have, let's say, a Sefer Torah or any, any Sefer of Kisvei Kodesh, that all the letters became wiped out, but the 85 letters that are still good, 85 letters is worth saving a Sefer for. Because since you see that like, even Seya HaOrin is an entire Sefer on its own, that's already a reason that we can go and save the safe. So that's one issue that I even say. But I, now I want to get to another fascinating, fascinating chido that uh, I saw inside. But the chido says something's really, really wild. <clears throat> he says that the day is going to come that the parish of Ayyib and Soya HaOrein is going to become a very, very, very large parish. It's going to be mispashit. It's going to spread its wings. It's going to become big. And it's going to include in it everything that happened to the Jewish people in all their exiles through all the generations. But this is a fantastic concept. Can you imagine such a thing? Like even Soya is now, in, it, it's, it's condensed in 85 letters. But there are two nun and afuchim, right? There are two backwards nun. Backwards nun, nun is always nun share bino. And backwards seems to imply that we can't really get to the bottom of it now. In other words, to understand why the Jewish people have to go into the Goliath, to, to understand why the Jewish people have to suffer the way we suffer today, it's way beyond the comprehension of anybody. Nun and afuchim. Backward nun, nun share bino, backwards. Right? But the day will come that everything is going to be clarified. It's going to be put out in a big, big safer, and we're going to understand every last piece of information about why the Jewish people had to endure such a golos. I wanted to discuss this for a moment. This, this idea to me is something fantastic, and I want to, I want to connect it to another Indian. We... Um, I learned once a Gemara in Moed Koton. The Gemara says in Moed Koton that there's a din that you're allowed to be Metzayim Kvorim on Cholom Moed. In Cholom Moed, you're allowed to, you know, Cholom Moed is also the Moloch. You're not allowed to do Molochus on Cholom Moed. But there's certain things that Chazal said that we're allowed to do. One of them is that you're allowed to mark a caver in order that people shouldn't come and they shouldn't become Tamei Chas So you could mark the caver. So it says over there in the Gemara that you have to mark the caver right on top of the caver. You can't mark it, you can't like put the marker a few feet in front of it in order that nobody should get close. Just right on the caver. So the Gemara says why? That you shouldn't be mafsed in Zeret Yisrael. You shouldn't lose Zeret Yisrael. In other words, if you're going to move the marker so there's going to be a certain part of Zeret Yisrael that you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to use that part of Eretz soil because people will be mistaken. They're going to think that there's a caver over there. <clears throat> and we have to use every last drop of Eretz soil. Very often I see people building, you know, there's a lot of building, thank God, going on in Eretz soil, and people are sometimes very, very upset. Oh, they're going to get my view. It takes away my view. I don't mind taking away my view. If Eretz soil gets filled up with people, Jewish people, I don't even mind that Joey Apter came to live in Eretz soil, you know? or Psachi Fadiman decided to stay here. It doesn't bug me, you know? And in Yitzh Hashem, a lot of people are going to be coming. The way I see it, you know, between the, between the corona 
and between the, you know, Black Lives Count and all the other good stuff that's happening in your countries over there. I think people are, uh, have been calling up Nefesh Ben Nefesh and uh, I don't think there are enough planes to bring all the people that want to come here. But nonetheless, the fact of the matter is there's a concept of Shalei Lahafsi the Seretz Yisrael. So there's a beautiful Arve Nachal. Listen to this gorgeous piece of Arve Nachal. It says that there was a fellow, Osniel Ben Knaz. It says when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, when Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, because of the, the sadness in the morning, 3,000 halachas were forgotten. Because everybody was depressed from the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu had, had died. And came along Osniel ben Kanaz, and Osniel ben Kanaz, he brought them back with his pilpul. He was able to, to be mechadosh the halachas and bring them back. Now, there's a pasuk in Sefer Yeshua, Shoftim. It says over there that Osniel ben, that, that there was, we know that there was a fellow by the name of Kalev, right? In Pasha Shlach, Kalev, everybody knows Kalev ben Yifunda. And he said that whoever is going to capture Kiryat Sefer is going to get his daughter Achsa as a bride. And nobody was able to do it. Till came along Osniel ben Knaz, and Osniel ben Knaz was able to capture Kiryat Sefer. So he explains that Avinachal says that what do these two things have to do to, together? Asliel ben Knaz brought back the halachas when Moshe Rabbeinu died. Asliel ben Knaz, on the other hand, uh, was able to capture Kigat Sefer. So he explains that every drop of Eretz soil is mushrash, is enrooted in words of the Torah. Every word of the Torah has a shayush in Eretz Yisrael. Every leader in Eretz Yisrael has a shayush in the Torah. Because they're intertwined, they're interconnected. The reason that nobody was able to capture Kiryat Sefer was because the laws of Moshe Rabbeinu had been, had been forgotten when he died. And those laws were intertwined in Kiryat Sefer, Eretz Yisrael. The moment that Asniel ben Knaz was able to bring back those laws, so then he was able to capture Kiryat Sefer. The two go together. Eretz Yisrael and the Torah go together. How, how, how fantastic it is, it, is it when you think about the fact that the Gemara says, the Gemara brings, that the Navi said, that all the Nevi'im wanted to know, why was Eretz Yisrael destroyed? And nobody knew the answer. Till the Navi came and said, because they left my Torah. <laughs> if Torah and Eretz Yisrael are intertwined, like we just said, that's why the reason that Eretz Yisrael was destroyed, it's because al Azam is Toyosi. So over here, so with this I want to go back to the Ibn Saya. It says that Lasud Lovi means Hashem. It says that Ertis soil is going to be mispashed the entire world. And it says Yushalayim is going to be mispashed till Damascus. Yushalayim is going to spread out till Damascus. And Ertis soil is going to spread out into the entire world. How could this be such a thing? I just told you that you have to have in other words, every drop of Eretz Yisrael is connected to you. But now that I told you the Chido, that the Chido says that Vahib and Soya is going to spread out, so too Eretz Yisrael is going to spread out. Eretz Yisrael spreads out when the Torah spreads out. The Torah spreads out when Eretz Yisrael spreads out. And, we're, and these Goliaths, these exiles that Nebuchadnezzar, the Jewish people, had to go through, this is going to be the source in Yitz Hashem of Eretz Yisrael and Yerushalayim being mispashed, spreading out. And who knows, maybe you guys won't even have to get onto a plane. Yeah, maybe we'll spread out and we'll come to you. You know the joke goes that uh, when you go to Gerula and you come to Malcha Yisrael, you come to Kikar Shabbos, you ask where Mir Yeshiva is. So they say either go straight and left or just wait a little bit and Mir Yeshiva is going to come over here. 
because they're always building new buildings, etc., etc. So in Yitzhak Hashem, maybe, just maybe, when Eretz Yisrael is mispashet, you know, it'll get to Lakewood, it'll get to Toronto, it'll get to all these important places and be able to whisk all you guys, and then you won't have to travel and go on a plane and wear a mask for 14 hours. That could be really, it's really, really annoying. It would be a much better way of getting to Eretz Yisrael. So I just want to end with a thought. You know, you see HaKadosh Baruch Hu over here, by Ibn Sayyid, I just explained to you that the reason he wanted to put in, he wanted to put in this parish of Ibn Sayyid is because he didn't want Peronius after Peronius. Hashem doesn't want to bring one bad thing after another bad thing. He puts in a half sick in between. You know, it dawned upon me a few weeks ago as we're, you know, basically recovering and the curve, you know, we so, thank God the curve has gone down. And it seems that we're exiting from the, at least phase one of the virus, though, you know, so much, so much terrible suffering has taken place. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it seems that we have some sort of reprieve from what, from unfortunately everything we had to go through. And, you know, one of the times that Ramban mentions it in Pashas Bamidbar, and we see it in Pashas Prinkhas, one of the times that HaKadosh Baruch Hu counts the Jewish people is after Magaifa. He counts the Jewish people, Marshal Leroya, uh, uh, a marshal to a shepherd who as the Ave came in, as the Ave came in and he started, he, he started uh, devouring the Shepsalat and now the Roya comes back and he wants to see, you know, what do I have left? What do I have, what, 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 what did I lose? What do I have left? And he counts, so to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mitochi Boson Shal Yisro because of his tremendous love for the Jewish people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu counts us after a Magaifa. It's a Magaifa that he himself brought, yes, absolutely. But he counts us. And we see now what we just said, that Vahid and Soya comes to be Mavu ben Peronius to Peronius. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want to bring Peronius after Peronius. So Mamela would seem to me that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu counts us after a Magaifa, it would seem that it's a time of Chibo. It's a time of love. And this is an opportunity for us to, yes, it was a very, very difficult kufa emotionally, maybe financially, maybe even chas v'sholem, chas v'sholem. You know, we may have lost loved ones, et cetera, et cetera. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it's an opportunity of chibo. It's, an, it's a time that a Kodesh Baruch Hu reaches out to us. He loves us. He cares about us. He's making the cheshben. Oy. You can imagine how much love HaKadosh Baruch Hu has for us now after all the tzaddikim that went up. And, you know, you can imagine what kind of balagan they're making up there in Olam HaEmes. So, Mitzvah Hashem, I hope that this should be a tkufa, a period of love and affection. And Mitzvah Hashem, we should uh, all be able to make the most of it and be able to, you know, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu extends a hand to us, we should be able to take that hand and become close to him in the best way possible. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see everybody. All the very Thanks best. Thanks so much, Rabbi. Thank Beautiful. you. Rabbi. Uh, Thank question. you. Can I ask a question? question? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Rob yeah. know about uh, in uh, Spanish flu in the night, during World War One? there were estimates of about 55 million people that died. I so I assume that a lot of from Jews died in Europe. But I haven't seen or I haven't heard the Ksav from Chemtz Chaim or any of the Paiskim writing about this particular Magaifa. Do you, are you familiar with anything from that Kufa? That's a very good question. I'm really not. That's the truth. Honest truth. I barely even heard about it. I'm so surprised that my, my, you know, my grandparents, who I knew well, my, my grandparents, I have one set of grandparents who were born in 1900, and they never told me anything about it. You know, I said it kind of as a joke, but it's not really a joke. I'm, I'm really surprised that they never shared it with me. They were both 17, 18 years old at the time. They never told me ever that there was such a thing as a Magaifa, you know what I mean? I, I read about it in the Torah. I, I didn't think this is something that really happens in real life, you know? And uh, behold, it does. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you that, uh, that I have any familiar, familiarity with it, although... What I can say is that, uh, you know, the, the, there's truvis, the letters of Rabbi Kiva Ega, that there was uh, Magaifas in his time, the cholera, 
etc. And uh, he instituted social distancing. And he was giving very clear instructions of what needs to take place on Rosh Hashanah. And the seats need to be separate. And, uh, you know, and even, and, and they can't, everybody can't come. Whoever will come Rosh Hashanah won't come on Yom Kippur. And whoever doesn't come on uh, Yom Kippur will come on Rosh Hashanah. And, you know, if there's a problem, so they should make lotteries. And, uh, you know, social distancing was the way he uh, enforced in the shul. So there definitely were magaifas, the particular magaifa that you asked about, uh, I haven't seen, but I did see letters of different bedoylem and doing different magaifas, and they absolutely insist on uh, listening to the authorities. No question about it. Okay. Okay. Good to see everybody. Thank you very, very, very much. Rabbi, thanks a lot. Yeah. Yehuda, Nassim. Hi, Yehuda. How you doing, Yehuda? Baruch Hashem. Welcome, well, Rabbi. Good to see you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thanks for helping us through this. Nassim, where are you? On a plane? Nassim. I wish, Rabbi. I wish. I'm sitting in the car. Oh, uh, looks like a plane your car. I wish. All right, Yaakov. Hi, Yaakov. How are you, Yaakov Kessler? Yaakov? Okay, good night, everybody. All the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you, Rebbe. Bye, Rebbe. Good night, good night. Good night. Joe. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. I know. And maybe I look a little better like this. No, man. <laughs> We're being recorded uh, though, so worse, this is much worse. Yeah, this is gonna be in the Neve, uh, what's it called? <laughs> on the recording, and it's right now live on Facebook, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I sent, I just sent you my number. Where do you, where do you live? Yeah, you're Schleim? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think you were in my apartment. I was. I, I, what's it called? That's why I said I was time. I was there some Hastara. Oh, good time. That was like five years ago. Yeah, I was visit. no, it was eight years ago. I was visiting, um, Israel for my sister's wedding. And that trip made my wife like, like started the the like it re restarted the the fire of desire to come back there to Israel. That's amazing. So, and then we made Aliyah three years ago. We're in Ramat Beit Shemesh Aleph. We're in Mishkafayim, uh, building right, a community. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give here. you a call. Fine, call me. I, I, I could. Yeah, call me now. Call me whatever. We'll speak. <laughs>